Hello and welcome to Kylie's Kitchen. I've had an influx of interest on my recipes on Instagram and also my lifestyle blog. So I thought, why not bring you into my kitchen? I've got so many recipes that I'd love to share with you. So come on in. Hi guys, welcome to Kylie's Kitchen. Today we are doing my Italian bolognese sauce. Now I know there are lots of recipes out there and you're probably already using my recipe, but for those people that haven't seen it yet, welcome to the show. Okay, now to the serious part. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely do not look like this in a kitchen when I am cooking. So hair is up, let's get serious and let's rock this. Now I'm getting really intricate, so for those people that just really are intimidated about their kitchen and how to even start, so this is why I'm doing this for you. You need a chopping board, you'll also need a decent sized knife. This will be basically to cut up your onion initially and you'll also want to dice your minced meat as well to make it smaller. If it is smaller in the actual dish, it's a lot tastier and it's just a nicer consistency to eat. Then when we are actually frying the onion, we're going to need a frying pan. Doesn't really matter what size the frying pan, but if you've got non-stick, it's even better. So you'll need a spatula just to actually fry that onion. Then when it comes into the sugar, which is the Kylie Boldy touch, not the Kylie Clark touch. This is, this is the back in the day when my dad taught me. Uh, you're going to need a tablespoon. So if you've got a tablespoon measure, remember this is a tablespoon measure. An actual tablespoon isn't exact and you won't know what an exact tablespoon is. You'll also need a quarter cup. That will be for your oil and a saucepan. Let's get ready. So you'll need 500 grams of premium minced meat. So you can get this absolutely anywhere. One. You'll need 500 grams of any kind of pasta sauce. I particularly like to choose red wine and garlic. So if you wanna do the recipe exactly as I do, doesn't matter what the brand is, just as long as it's red wine and garlic. Virgin olive oil, you are going to need this and it is super tasty if it's virgin olive oil. Diced tomatoes, 400 gram can is all you need. Again, it doesn't matter what the brand is as long as they're diced tomatoes. Italian herbs and spices for flavor. One brown onion, two garlic cloves, and yes, sugar. I forgot about the tomato paste. You need some tomato paste. So this is what you're going to need to make my famous bolognese sauce. I'm saying it's famous because my husband absolutely loves it and so does my girlfriends. And I've actually shown so many people this exact same recipe. So I hope you enjoy it as well. And as I said, this is not a fashion statement when you come to my kitchen. So I don't know about you, but I have a germ phobia and I would hate to put my hands in anyone's food. So I cook with gloves. I'm ready for this operation. Okay, so first things first is I prepare my onion. So basically just get rid of the skin and if you feel that the first layer isn't quite top notch quality, just get rid of that as well. Disregard that. And no one said that Kylie's kitchen is a clean kitchen either. Just thought I'd let you know. Um, my trick, and I don't know if anyone believes in these things or not, but to actually um, not get your eyes to sting or burn or cry is Predominantly, don't cut this end first. Cut the other end and actually just don't cut it until you get to the end of the onion. So I cut them nice and thin. So far, no crying. And this is just another little silly trick. If you find it really, really hard and it's wobbling, cut the bottom so it's flat. Then you can hold your onion and it doesn't rock. So basically, as you can see, I haven't really cut that end and that's why I feel it's um, less of the juices comes out, which means you won't cry. So we're just gonna make these um, into squares. You don't actually have to make too much of an effort. So straight through that way. And then if it's easier, turn your board around. And another reason why I wear the gloves is because you can hold the food. You don't feel like you're sort of making a mess on your hands and you have to wash your hands 10 times, especially if you suffer dermatitis or anything like that. Now that's your onion ready. And what you'll do is just pop that aside so that we can prepare our garlic. 
Now, another way just to help with the eye thing, even if your eyes do start to water a bit, is wash your hands. If you wash your hands, then you're getting rid of all those juices. So next step is we're going to get our garlic ready. Cut the ends off. I always find the hardest thing about this is not actually chopping the garlic or the onion. It's actually trying to get it out of its little encasement. When it comes to winter time, as people say, garlic is a, like a natural medicine. So it's always great to have a decent amount of garlic and it's quite tasty. But like anything and any of my recipes, you can just do as you wish. If you're not a garlic fan and you don't really want that much garlic in it, then just put one clove. But I personally put the two. Cut it into a few pieces. If you don't have a container or like a sort of, you know, Tupperware device that actually can chop up the garlic for you, obviously you would hand chop it just nice and small into tiny little squares. But if you want something quick and easy, you use one of these puppies, pop the lid on and away she goes. Because that's what I mean by tiny. You sort of want it to feel like You've got the garlic taste in your dish, but you don't necessarily have the feel of grabbing like onto the garlic with your teeth or anything like that when you're actually having the sauce. So what I do is I basically just use a teaspoon to get it out of your device. Put it to the side and next what we're going to do is show you how to just quickly brown your onion. The reason I brown the onion first before I actually brown the mincemeat is because I love the frying pan to actually have that onion smell. And that actually helps the mincemeat taste a little bit more oniony as well. In true Italian style, um, we always simmer our sauce for a sort of, you know, maybe two hours or two and a half hours. It's all very dependent, but you don't necessarily have to, but it will actually taste so much better. And in all honesty, any tomato sauce bolognese sauce will taste better or the best the second day. So I'm just going to show you this because you can have done this first if you wish to have it simmering for a longer period of time before you even start cutting up your actual onions, your garlic and also preparing that mincemeat. So obviously we'll just pop the stove on. Nice decent sized saucepan because remember you're actually going to still be adding 500 grams of your mincemeat. So once you've got 500 grams of the bolognese sauce in, you've also got 400 grams of the t diced tomatoes and then the 500 grams of the mincemeat, you're going to need a decent sized saucepan. So first things first, a quarter cup of olive oil. I know it looks like a lot, but honestly, if you want it to be restaurant quality, I'm just joking, but what I mean is if you want it to really taste quite nice, you do need to have the olive oil in there. Make sure that that warms up. That's why I'm putting that in first. Next step is your bolognese sauce. You don't throw that away just yet. I'm just gonna finish this and I'll show you what I do with that. Then we put in the 400 grams of the diced tomatoes. Make sure it's all in there. Never, never miss a bit. And I'll also get I was going to get the large. I was going to get the large one, but you don't need a large one. This size is perfect. So you can mix that around straight away. And when we say simmer, it means simmer. That's actually on low, so basically on level three. So you're not wanting to burn the base of the saucepan. You're not wanting to burn the base of the tomato. You actually really just want to start warming it up and basically get the nutrients out of the food so that it simmers and mixes through all the other ingredients and obviously the flavor. It's all about the flavor. So that's where that's at. Now, depending on how tasty you want it, I love Italian herbs and spices and I put a lot in and I think that that's what makes it tasty. So that's me. The reason I won't give you a measurement for that is because it's flavor is all got to do with what you like and eventually you'll start to learn what you like. So um, you can go by, you know, sort of how many rough, roughly how many shakes, you know, nine, 10 shakes, if that's how you want to judge it. But um, initially just, just do what you feel and go with your gut because it always seems to be right. 
Um, now, obviously, like I said, always stir your ingredients through. We'll let that simmer away. While we do, I'm just going to grab some water. So basically I'll fill this up with a quarter of boiling water, shake it, and then I'll add it into the actual sauce. Tomato sauce, as you know, can be quite bitter. Um, and what we need to do is obviously take away that bitterness just a little. This is one of the tricks and I'll show you the other in just a moment. So as you can see, it's lightly bubbling. If it's lightly bubbling and it's not aggressive, that means it's simmering. So now I've put in the boiling water into the bolognese sauce or the red wine and garlic sauce, whatever you want to call it. Just shake it around, not to miss any bit of those beautiful herbs and spices that are already in there. And then just add your boiling water to the sauce. The tomato paste that I so never forgot about in the beginning. Ta-da! Okay. We're getting our measure and I normally do about one tablespoon. If you don't have these and you want to do two flat tablespoons from the actual kitchen, you can do that. But as you can see, this is a lot deeper. So I'd probably say one tablespoon. I mix it in there only because obviously this is metal and I can and you'll start to learn. I don't like to waste. And then the next one is again, we'll just wash this tablespoon out. Again, when I was talking before, we were talking about the tomato paste and how, or the tomatoes in general, and how they actually are quite bitter. So one good tablespoon of sugar. Some people might not like adding sugar at all, but this is my little trick, and, or lots of people's little trick. And this is what we do, just to take away that little bit of the bitterness. And you know what? You might want another half a tablespoon more and, and you'll know that once you've put the meat, meat, minced meat in there and once you've actually let it sit for a while and you do have to taste test things. Oh, what a shame. So what we're going to do is let that simmer away. Pop the lid on to make sure that the heat stays in. Make sure that the flame's not too high and the reason I'm going to show you this is because I think sometimes Cooking in general is quite daunting and it's even more daunting when you just have no idea what to do at all. So I really want people to be able to feel comfortable moving out of home when they're 18 or 21 um, and just having a small understanding of making simple things. And I guess this is why I wanted to do these videos so I can help you better understand the simple things and how to make moving out of home even easier for you. So that's called basically like a simmer. So that's about a, you know, a three out of 10 when it comes to the flame size. You can always put it on something smaller if you wish. The reason I choose that size is because I know my stove and I know that that actually simmers better than here. This side is actually more aggressive, believe it or not. So we are going to leave him there and I'm going to show you how to do your uh, onions as well as your mincemeat and prepare that to pop that inside your dish. Stove's on around about a 7 out of 10 when it comes to the flame is what I would normally do. Grab some of your virgin olive oil, pop it over the pan and then get ready to put in the diced onion. So what you're wanting to do is just basically brown it. Um, the reason you're browning it outside in a frying pan is because once you actually put it into the simmering sauce, which I'm going to stir, and I can see it's bubbling a fair bit, so I might just bring it down a little bit, is because generally, um, generally it, it means it's going to be already cooked. It's actually not going to cook too much further once it's actually in another substance like a sauce. So that's why you want to make sure it's roughly the level that you want it to be cooked before it actually goes into the sauce. So while that is cooking away, I can take my lid off just for a moment, check my sauce again. Smelling good, I know you can't smell it, but it does smell good. Then I'm gonna grab the pre-chopped up garlic. I use two cloves, just a reminder. You can use one if you wish. And then I'm just going to stir that in because I really do want the garlic to start fermenting and really make the Italian herbs and the tomato become tastier and tastier as it all blends together. I think I just love a tap. It just makes you feel like you're in the kitchen, you're doing your thing. 
I don't know, something about the tab. Okay, so the onion is starting to brown. As you can see, it's starting to get just a little bit of a brown tinge on it. Do not walk away from your cooking. I just had a thought then. These would burn and yeah, you just make sure that you're constantly concentrating on your cooking, you know, have a conversation, sure, make a coffee and come back, but um, don't ever leave your food on the stove with the flames going for too long. Uh, you know, you don't want to burn the flavor out of food either, so. My opinion would be totally different if it was eggs. I have this funny thing with eggs. I, I, I can't stand the smell of an actual gooey egg, so that's a complete lie. And you can burn an egg to death. I love them, like completely burnt, 10 out of 10 cooked, does not move. Slap it against the wall. That's how I like my eggs. Don't worry, I won't teach you those though. You would probably think they taste horrible. So now we're ready to pop our onion into our sauce. I know that you all know I'm not a chef and no way am I a professional at all. I'm just doing my thing the way I do my thing at home and I just hope I can help you guys to, you know what, even if you do an amazing tomato based bolognese sauce yourself but you just wanted to try something different, you know, I hope that you can just give this a go and let us know. I'd love to know what you actually think of it. You can tell me anything you like. Okay. I'm re-oiling the pan. I'm going to continue to let the sauce simmer. So I'm going to pop the lid back on. Just so you know, I do, there is a hole on the lid. So there's still a little bit of air that's um, able to, you know, come out of that saucepan. So it's not suffocated. Um, and now I'm going to pick up the 500 grams of minced meat. What I normally do, and you can do it on the chopping board or in here, it's just as easy. I'd like to just really chop it down. I really don't want to have thick clumps of minced meat in my mouth. So that's why I don't want it in my sauce. Nice and easy and simple. And here we go. So again, just chopping it up a little bit. Um, the minced meat is gonna naturally stick together. It's quite moist. And you want it to stay moist. So for me personally, I you know, I cook this nice and quick. Do not walk away from it. Just cook it nice and quick. Get it brown. Get it to the consistency you want. Do not overcook it. Remember, like I said, you want it to be probably the, the 8 out of 10 of what you want the meat consistency to be before you put it into the saucepan. And the reason I say that, again, was because once it's in the sauce, it's not going to cook too much more. It, it will cook a little more. That's why you don't want it to be dry before it even goes into your sauce. So if you're not walking away from your frying pan, you can turn it up a little, give it a bit more heat. Make sure you put that oil in before if you've just joined us. Put the oil in your frying pan before you put your meat in. And there's no reason why you couldn't do um, a veal mince or a pork mince. I've actually just got a beef mince. It's just what we like in the Clark household. Um, my husband loves this dish. And he'll be very excited tonight because that means he gets to have his penne bolognese, which is one of his favorite dishes. So as you can see, it's still quite moist. You've got the uh, water coming out of the meat. You've got the combination of the oil that I previously put in. And again, it's at a beautiful consistency. It's literally just turned from the final pink to brown. And that's when you want to stop. Okay, now we're going to put our beautiful minced meat into our sauce. Another thing I do do, and just depends on the day and how I feel, you know, every day is different. Sometimes when I've got the minced meat and I've cooked it on the, um, on the frying pan, I'll actually put the Italian herbs and spices on the minced meat because again, it just takes away that sort of meaty smell and it actually adds and infuses the herbs and spices into the meat. So that's another great way of doing it. 
Uh, and you can't forget salt and pepper. Again, you could add the salt and pepper to your meat if you wanted to while you're frying it, or you can just add it into the saucepan. I can't actually tell you, like I said, I'm not a professional. I can't tell you how much salt and how much pepper. I just do it how I do it, how I've been doing it for the last sort of, you know, 10, 12 years, and it's just what I do. So it's about that. Got me? And then pepper. If you're not afraid of like that peppery taste, I love pepper. I, I never grew up with peppers and chilies, but I grew to love it. And so, look, I'd probably say, you know, maybe four or five pinches. You know, what will that be? A tea, a, maybe two teaspoons, a teaspoon, a teaspoon, and sprinkle it across. So that's what it will look like before it's mixed in with each other. And away we go. So this is the extra simmering process. So this is when hubby says, is dinner ready yet? And you say, no honey, it'll be ready in an hour. Again, make sure that you're leaving your sauce on simmer, so the flame is low, and then this is the consistency, basically, that you should see. Now I know what I'm explaining today is a recipe for my bolognese sauce, but for those of you who might not know how to just make pasta, um, I'm using penne, you can use whatever you wish. For one person, they say it's basically a cup and a little, so it's about 125 grams, so this is 500 grams and that will do a family of four, depending on how much males eat, you know, some people have bigger bellies than others. I never do this, like I, I would never put it in a cup, but I'm, I'm just showing you. Um, so I'm just gonna show you pretty much enough for one person, and then obviously you can double it and triple it and so on. So what you are going to need is a saucepan, boiling water, three quarters filled, because you want your pasta to be submerged in the water. Let's do it, let's head to the stove. Okay, so we've got our saucepan, three quarters full with boiling water, it just means that it's going to further boil even quicker. It's on high, as you can see, it's boiling away. Um, and now that it's actually boiling, which means it's the water is bubbling, that's when you put your pasta in and then you're going to time it 10 to 11 minutes from that point. If you were to put it in and your water was cold, you would not be able to time your pasta correctly. It's not rocket science, I know that. That was my one cup and a little bit. Oh, not just not that one. Stir it away, and one of the other little tricks, you probably already know this and already do it, is just a little bit of olive oil will help keep the pasta separated. I'm not saying, again, that you can walk away and it's gonna not, you know, all stick together, but it actually just helps make the water a little more moist. And you can actually see, obviously, oil and water doesn't um, mix well, but what it will do is help the pasta to not stick together. We'll come back to that in about 10 to 11 minutes time and that will be an al dente kind of consistency for the pasta. So why the pasta cooks I'm waiting about 10, 11 minutes. Normally I don't wait and just ponder. But I thought I'd tell you this funny little story. Why I think it's a little bit funny and very ironic that when I was little, I absolutely loved being in the kitchen and mum would start to teach me how to cook things. And obviously I had no idea whatsoever what I was doing but I actually pretended that I had a cooking show. So I was like, so you put one tablespoon of this in here and then, and then you just mix it. And this is what we're going to do. And I think it was mostly I was baking cakes because that's obviously quite a simple thing to do, like as a kid or a teenager. That's so funny. Like now I'm showing you guys how to cook. And I love it. I'm so passionate about cooking. I think it's so much fun. Um, it's actually, for me personally, it's quite therapeutic. And I'm so grateful that I actually paid attention to mum and dad when I was younger and I, you know, I listened to some of their cool recipes. And I just think it's so ironic now that I'm actually just doing these little videos to try and help people and yeah, show you a couple of my little tricks and tips in the kitchen. And on that note, let's get back to reality. I have to go and stir the penne pasta. So now our Bolognese sauce is ready. It's been simmering for about two hours. It is looking and smelling delicious. 
Now this is just, if you want to have the bolognese sauce on its own, you can. Um, another great little uh, idea is just to have it on toast. So if you're having carb day, awesome hangover food. This is another simple recipe. that is easy to enjoy. It has many uses. We can also do meatballs in this kind of sugo sauce and yeah, I'm looking forward to showing you those too. Okay, so we have a spaghetti bolognese sauce already smelling balls, and our pasta. So we're gonna pop our pasta in. What I did was just put the pasta into the strain and popped it into the sink and what I do just to get that starch, you know that stuff that actually sticks together, makes the pasta stick together, just put it through some running boiling water and that will get rid of it. Just, you know, keep sort of moving the pasta around the boiling water and that will actually get rid of that stuff. So we have our pasta, which is ready. And now this is the best part. In goes the pasta sauce. Another thing uh, that's extremely lovely and so very Italian, to do is to put fresh Parmesan cheese, shaved or grated on the top, or you can also get the Parmesan cheese that is actually on the shelves in your supermarket and you can sprinkle that on top. And this is Kylie's famous bolognese sauce. Hope you love it, because I'm about to try it. Now it's time to take the gloves off. This is my favorite bit ever. And dinner is served. Don't mind if I do. Bellissimo. If you liked this recipe, please make sure you do head to lifestyle.com.au. The link is actually in the description below this video. And if you loved the video, be sure to subscribe and we'll keep you updated with more recipes. That'll be the gate. She's got the world's best guard dog. She's a Pomeranian cross silky. She's like this big, but has the roar of a German Shepherd. Oh, and this is the best part. Okay. And now, stop laughing. Okay, what is, that's a good blue part. Ha! <laughs>